Today I'm creating some primitive and rustic Halloween and fall decor ideas that will totally spook your socks off. Welcome to The Chic Show. Today's playlist is Rust a Wing, part of Can't Sleep Creations, and it's hosted by Up All Night DIY, Shabby Meets Bling, and Repurposed My Way. I was excited to see that Walmart had black and white plastic pumpkins this year. I'm going to take this one and I'm painting on some of Dixie Belle's patina paint in iron. Once the iron paint has dried, I'm spraying on some Dixie Belle Patina Spray in green. And these two take a couple of hours to react, but it will make a rusted look. So here's a look at it before it dries. And now here's a look at it when it was completely dried and finished. A faux rusty crusty faux jack-o'-lantern. For this project, I'm using two tin cans that I have washed out, and I'm going to paint them with Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin. Now I'm adding on some clear wax. I believe this is Jolie's clear wax, and I'm going to cover each of the cans. Now to add some faux rust without using patina paint. I'm just using some Jolie's dark wax and I'm just going to rub it all over this can and by applying the clear wax first it kind of acts as an eraser so I can pull back some of this dark wax in areas that I don't want it. I let it dry for just a little bit because I do want some of that dark wax to stay and now I'm going to go back and wipe it back with a paper towel. I'm going to be making some pumpkin bells with these so now we need to add the bell part. I chose two of these smaller wood stems and I drilled a small hole in the top because I'm going to be adding in a little hook. Now I'm going to drill a hole in the top of both tin cans. In jute twine, I tied a knot onto the top of the wood stems, which will actually be the ringer that goes inside the bell. I chose two more stems to be the peduncle of both of the pumpkins, so I'm drilling a hole all the way through both of these stems. When I went to thread the twine through the can, I had to use a doll needle. They're a, a long skinny needle that helped me get that twine up through the can. But before I did that, I did tie another knot in the twine so that the ringer would not come all the way up through the can. I'm going to again use that needle to go ahead and thread the peduncle onto the twine as well. I repeated the same process for the other bell and then I tied a knot at the top of the twine. Now 
Just to keep things secure, I added a little bit of hot glue underneath those stems and also added a little bit of green moss. I finished these bells off with a little bit of gold rub and buff on, around the edges and on some of the raised areas. Let me know what you think about these little pumpkin bells. Starting by cutting a ghost shape out of this book page. I'm going to add some eyes and a mouth to my little ghosty, and I'm going to be decoupaging this ghost onto this wood block that I thrifted. Before I paint the wood block, I do want to run over it with some candle wax. This will help me scrape back some of the paint in a few minutes. I'm going to give it a coat of white chalk paint. I'm also going to be painting the back of my ghost white just so that any colors that are underneath it won't show through the paper. Now that my block is dry, I'm going to give it a messy coat of black chalk paint. Now I'm going to be scraping back some of the paint, not while the paint is absolutely wet, but after it's dried just a few minutes, and that will give me kind of a weathered, uh, haunted look. To give it even more of a worn look, I'm going to sand around the edges, and those places that I have put that wax, the paint should come right off. I decided my ghost needed to stand out a little bit more, so I went back and added just a few brushes, a few strokes of that black chalk paint around where my ghost would be. I'm applying Mod Podge to the back of my ghost, and then I'll place it in the center of the block. And to seal it in, I'll give it another coat of that Mod Podge. Now I'm taking some Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just kind of brushing around on to the ghost and the block just to give it kind of a dirty look. And since this is already sealed with Mod Podge, I can go back and kind of wipe some of that away if I need to. And I did later go back and stamp the French word for ghost on the right side of this block. You can see it very faintly here.
For this project, I started with this block of wood that I thrifted and I used some antique wax mixed with water and stained the whole thing. I used more antique wax than water because I did want it to be kind of dark. Then I used this spare uh, children's block that I also thrifted. I painted um, white chalk paint, actually I think it's plaster from Waverly, and I'm just rubbing it across that wood piece because it gives it as you can see, a very rustic look. I'm gonna do the same thing all around the edges as well. This is an easy way to get a rustic, worn look without having to sand or have to use more than one product. I have a little piece of drop cloth and my apothecary stamps by IOD and I'm going to be stamping on the word fall. I stained one of these wooden drawer pulls with that same uh, stain that I used for the block and I'm using wood glue to glue that onto the top of the block. I've got some leaves here and some sunflowers that I want to use, but first I'm going to tie on that little tag that I made. Using hot glue, I'll add my other small embellishments like my leaves and my sunflower. Hope you've enjoyed these primitive and rustic ideas for Halloween and fall. I think this is my favorite project from today. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. Thanks again to all our hosts today. Please find their channels and all their information in the description box below along with the fabulous playlist. Here's another video I think you might like. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to share the chic. Bye now.